Man, I don't even know where to start. It was an uh, interesting game. I thought the way it started, Iowa, give them a lot of credit. They, they played well. They pushed the ball. Uh, we looked so poor defensively. I think that was the worst I've seen Keith Appling play in that first 10 minutes. And uh, I think the great, there's a lot of tough things about the job, but the good things is when you get players to respond. And at halftime, you know, we really challenged Keith. I mean, Keith Appling the first half and the second half was Keith Appling the last six weeks and Keith Appling the first six weeks. And I think the great part about it is when he made a three or made a, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but if you watched our bench, they were so happy for him. And uh, what happens is, uh, I've said all along, when you got a quarterback, when you got a point guard, if the head dies, the body goes. And the head had been a little bit knocked unconscious there for a few weeks for a variety of reasons, None, most of them not his fault. And and I think you saw a better second half and playing him and Trav together. And a Spartan game wouldn't be a Spartan game if somebody didn't, you know, when Gary went down, thought it was his back, but he was just cramping up all over his body. And that's kind of poetic justice, I guess. But, uh, you know, Adrian did some things and, you know, we had that, uh, some of that Iron Mountain crew came in there for a while and, uh, you know, Kaminsky made a couple big shots. And and I thought maybe the unsung hero of the game was Brandon Dawson. You know, if you look at him from a stat line, BJ's four for seven, he's seven rebounds, he's eight points, he has two assists, he has three blocks, he has five steals. And, uh, you know, did an incredible job. And, you know, when Devin Marvel, who you got to give a lot of credit to, I mean, he... He made some shots, but he made some tough shots. And BJ, first guy in a long time, you know, kept saying to me, give him to me in the huddle. And that for us was a step in the right direction. And uh, I think um, we still were a little bit out of sync, but uh, a lot better performance second half against what I think is a very good team that I thought played very well, you know. And, and the last thing, it was a physical game, you know, and I've been complaining that our team is not tough enough I said we've we've kind of lost our two toughest guys in Dawson and Appling and tonight uh I thought both teams played awfully hard. So I'll take it for questions. Coach down here in front. Um first four minutes of the second half, you get five fouls and two twenty one to start the half, but you go on a nine nothing run in spite of that. What do you credit that to and, and what was the cause for you to be able to weather that storm? Well, we came out and said we're going to be more aggressive, but not the foul, because Iowa does such an incredible job of getting to the free throw line through the whole year. And uh, the last thing I wanted them to do was get on the line. And uh, sure enough, we get those five fouls. And, you know, my humble opinion, there were some just touchy fouls. And, uh, and that made it hard. And I just told them, hey, we're not changing. Felt like Mark D'Antonio. We're not changing our D-backs at Notre Dame. You know, we're not going to change what we do, because... And, and I just thought we, uh, Keith keeping pressure on, uh, doing a better job on Marble at times, because he is really good. And, uh, and then, you know, we got our running game going. We ran some stuff and uh, got the ball inside a little more. We did a poor job of that, and that, that, that falls on my shoulders in the first half. But uh, I, I credit to a halftime when we said, hey, we either got to start quit talking it and start walking it and, uh, you know, quit worrying about um, – it's not an excuse either. I want everybody in here to know it's not an excuse what these guys have been through. Most human beings wouldn't be able to go through – not many teams could go through what these guys have been through. So – but I told them it was time that if we're going to make a run, you know, we got to play better, and they did. Tom, you've uh, been saying for a couple of games that you've been playing – strange lineups out there the second half was that more of the types of lineups that you wanted to see well it was but I mean there was a couple times there when when Trav and, and Kenny and uh, Elvin because we you know we had Gary Hurt we had a little bit of fall trouble with Keith and uh, uh, you know AP was you know and Brandon I mean Brandon we're still trying to bring him back but uh, I, th I thought the other guy that did a pretty good job was Costello you know, he he did some pretty good things. We were struggling stepping up on those curls. And and in the second half, Adrian Payne did a much, much better job, you know, and um, and so did Costello. So I guess sort of, but if you look at a couple of those big shots in the second half, Kaminsky hit a couple, and Trice, you know, was 
was phenomenal. I mean, uh, they had him down for five turnovers, and he probably did, but uh, they were five good turnovers because most of them went out of bounds. Now, at the end of the game, you know, I didn't want to foul. I wanted to get those seniors in, and I'm yelling at Appling to throw the ball out, and he's yelling at me, no. And I'm going, huh, there's a disrespectful senior if I ever saw one. And, you know, the guy's so worried about his turnovers, he didn't want it. So I said, well, give it to Denzel. And he says, I don't want to turn it over. I said, you're an underclassman. Turn that damn thing over. <laughs> so he did, threw it out, and that was, uh, that was good. I, I, you know, it's, it's special around here to end for those seniors the right way with the Spartan head and everything. And uh, I'm just happy to end it that way. <laughs> Uh, Coach, you had already talked about or touched upon how the players on the bench really rose up when Keith made that shot. But can you talk about the crowd and how they interacted when yeah. he got, kind of got back into it in the second half? You know, the same way and better, which really means to me that our fans really took some ownership in, in him, you know, and I think they appreciated that he was a, uh, you know, he's been going through hell. I mean, it wasn't the three weeks out. It was the three weeks before that, and it was – you know, his world kind of dropped out from under him and, and really not his fault. And and I, I felt when he hit that one, I just looked up and people in the upper deck were rising. And I, I told that to Keith as we walked off the floor. I said, man, I said, every every person in this building had your back. And um, and when you played harder, a lot of good things happened for you. And never do you have to tell Keith Appen to play harder. But I think he's had the weight of the world on his shoulders. It doesn't come off because of one night, but it takes a big, big, big step. Big step. Obviously, Gary's a great player, but when he was on the bench with Trice Valentine and Appling together, they seem less waiting for Gary to do something. How do you coach that, Tom, and fix that? Well, you know, I mean, that's part of us not playing together. You hit the nail on the head. You know, I mean, for a long time, Gary had to do everything. I mean, we had, you know, we had AP out of there. We had... Keith out of there. We had that one one game. We had Trice out of there too. You know, there. So then you're asking a guy to do more, and then you're telling him to do less, and that's that's the things that, you know, I could talk hours on if you knew how many nights I stayed up, thinking and trying to figure these things out, and and still trying to figure out that I've never heard of this, I've never seen it. So I mean, think about Gary and think about the other guys. I mean, that is part of the problem, and. Uh, <laughs> But Gary was fine, you know, he went back in, and I was just worried about his, uh, I thought it was his back, but it was just cramps, and but they were through his whole body, so he'll recover from that. Coach, uh, Adrian looked kind of tired again in the first half. Did, was, it, was he just kind of Well, I think every it? senior, I, I think that was part of Keith's problem, you know, he wasn't, I think every senior, you know, I told our guys before that, it doesn't matter if you loved it here, hated it here, whatever. This will be a memory-making night, you know, and um, there'll be emotions that, you know, you won't think you have that you have. It's the way it is. And uh, I've never seen a guy from the hardcores like Antonio and and Nicks and guys like that to the to the soft guys that, you know, feel that way. I, I, it affects everybody. I mean, you're a senior at a place like this. You put in a lot of work. And uh, I think that's why you get fatigued early. You know, we worry about that every senior night. And it's been a little better since we don't have the ceremony before. And uh, But it's still their last jump ball, their last, their last, their last. There's not many things in your life that you're doing for the last time when you really think about it. There's only a few, and that was one of them. Coach, you mentioned Dawson commanding in the huddle, wanting to guard Marble. Marble goes 7 of 10 in the first half, 2 of 7 in the second half. It was more than just him as an adjustment. What did you plan at halftime to rearrange what you were doing against Marble? Uh, Keith Keith did a better job. Gary did a better job. And then, in fairness to, like, Gary and them, you know, when you guard a guy like him and they're, they're rubbing him off those screens and they do a great job on those curls, and uh, our bigs had to step up. In the first half, they weren't stepping up. So... You know, it's like everything else uh, defensively. It was a team effort, and uh, it's one guy looks bad when he's guarding the guy, but if the other guys don't do their job, you know, then it doesn't get done. And so you, you ask a Gary Harris to trail him, and if the guy that's supposed to step up doesn't, of course he's going to be there for a layup if he curls. So everybody had to do their job, And uh, but I'll tell you what, that kid was, whew, he was good the first half. Give him credit. He was really, really good, and I got to see his dad after, and, you know, 
I'm, I, he's a good kid, and I'm happy for him. I'm just glad we won. Tom, it looked like Dawson, too, right? It looked like Dawson just had so much energy tonight right from the get-go. Does, does that performance just kind of epitomize what he can do for this team and what his role can be when, when he's playing that well? Yeah, and I told him after the game I graded him about a 60 because he did, but he also took some time off here and there, you know. And, you know, an incredible play is when he blocked that shot and then he was down the other end and they gave him. I didn't make the layup because the guy cut him off, but I don't know how he got there. I can't wait to see it on film. But I, I said, you're going to question me questioning you when you just blocked the shot on one end and you almost got a layup on the other end. I said, forget it. You know, don't even, don't even talk about it. That was an incredible play. That's what you're capable of doing. And he has, he has incredible ability still. I mean, we're, he's just coming back. I mean, he's got a ways to go, but boy, it's fun to have him back because he's a live wire, you know, and and they know it. And it, it make any progress with uh, rotation? Only one player with more than 30 minutes tonight, which uh, I think that enables you to really ask guys to reach down defensively when they're conserving fuel, right? What do you think about the rotation and a little more depth? You, you know, I, I thought we did a little better job. Um, some of it was by necessity when Harris got hurt or when we got in foul trouble. It wasn't as smooth. DJ and I did meet for the first time in three months and tried to come up with something, and DJ had a list there how he was going to rotate them, and... But I can't say we hit it good, but I think we made a little bit of progress. And, um, you know, we just got to do a better job so guys don't get tired. Gary, for some reason tonight, I mean, he was just cramping up at the beginning. I mean, we, we took him out. I think DJ took him out three minutes into the game, you know. And uh, he said, I just can't get my second wind, you know. And he really never got it. But he made some big plays, too, and he defended pretty well once we got going.